and last speaker, um, who is Andres Gustafsson. Uh, Dr. Andres Gustafsson is co-founding partner at Quanti Quantify and holds an MSc from the Stockholm School of Economics and PhD in health economics from Karolinska Institute at Sweden. During his PhD studies, Andres developed new methods for the economic evaluation of treatment for Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Gustafsson has worked with health economics since 2005, first as a researcher at European Health Economics and from uh, 2008 as associate director at IE3 Innovas, leading a research team in neuroscience. In 2011, he co-founded Quantify Research, a consultancy in health economics, outcomes research and real-world evidence. He has a broad competence within research and has co-authored over 30 peer-reviewed papers, including registry studies, prospective cohorts, within trial analysis, patient and caregiver preference studies, and decision analytic models. Andres, Andres was coordinator and first author of the European Study on the Costs of Brain Disorders, 2010, initiated by the European Brain Council. So welcome, Andres, and we are really looking forward to your lecture on estimating the number of people at the different stages of Alzheimer's disease. The floor is yours. The virtual floor is yours. <laughs> thank you so much, Eva, and thanks to Alzheimer Europe uh, for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here, and I, I must applaud Alzheimer Europe for this uh, fantastic workshop. Three really uh, great speakers and interesting talks uh, prior to mine. Uh, I wonder how I, how I should follow up on this. Um, I'll, I'll show some numbers and, and present um, a study uh, that we did. Um, let's see if I can switch slides here. No. Now. So um, I'm presenting today on behalf of Project Alzheimer's Value Europe. Um, PAVE, and that's a collaborative multi-stakeholder forum focused on the value assessment of and funding of uh, emerging therapeutic and diagnostic innovations in Alzheimer's disease in Europe. Um, and we have mainly two goals. Uh, one is to educate uh, policymakers, payers, and other influencers uh, in key European countries uh, on current challenges related to assessing value in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and the second goal is to work together uh, with, with all these stakeholders to find solutions uh, to all these challenges. Um, and one of our first objective and uh, first activities that we identified was to better understand the epidemiology of the disease. So today I will present uh, our Europe-focused findings. Um, the data that I will present is part of a larger uh, publication that we are planning for this year. Uh, so it, it's confidential at this moment, but um, um, if you have any questions related to this, you may, may uh, visit our website or contact me. Um, I also have a lot of collaborators for this work, of course, and I'm very grateful to them. them. Also, uh, this uh, PAVE is funded by Roche and Biogen. So Alzheimer's disease is an enormous and growing burden to our society. Uh, there are a lot of estimates uh, on the number of sufferers with dementia, uh, 50 million globally, um, 11 million perhaps in Europe, uh, and this is expected to increase over time. Um, there are also estimates for the e European Union, um, and, and that also uh, expected to about double uh, over just one generation. And that's for dementia as, as a whole. Um, two thirds of these are um, uh, uh, have a clinical diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease uh, about. Um, and that too is expected uh, to increase over time. Um, this is obviously associated with a lot of costs. Uh, on a global level, it has been estimated at above 1 trillion US dollars. Um, and again, that's increasing over time, um, also doubling over uh, the next 30 years or so. And to, already today, uh, it can be compared to about half of the Italian economy, which shows how enormous this is. We may compare also to other disorders. Um, it's uh, comparable or even higher than cancer. 
Um, these are a bit uh, dated estimates, but but uh, as you can see here, dementia is the cost of dementia are higher than for cancer. Uh, there are different uh, setups of these costs. There are more medical costs in cancer, the blue bar here, uh, whereas in dementia, it's more related to social care, uh, nursing homes and home health and so forth. And also the yellow bar here, the, the time and effort that is spent by family caregivers um, caring for their loved ones. Um, So all these numbers are related to uh, the dementia stage of AD. Um, but as we heard um, earlier, um, this disease starts 20, 30 years prior to uh, onset of AD dementia. Um, and, and these are not included in the estimates on the numbers of persons living with uh, AD today. Um, and moreover, the estimates are also uh, not based on biomarker confirmed populations, but on uh, clinical AD dementia diagnosis. So um, we wanted to have a look into this. So we conducted a study to estimate the number of persons with AD across all uh, disease stages, across the Alzheimer continuum. So we uh, performed a literature review uh, to uh, uh, identify evidence on the prevalence of AD across all stages. Um, and then we developed a model uh, to estimate the number of global number of persons with AD. And this is particularly interesting because uh, these uh, early stages of AD is a potential target population, both for prevention as we have heard and also future therapies. Um, so we conducted this literature and we find a lot, found a lot of evidence on, uh, on different uh, uh, outcomes and different uh, uh, types of data on both uh, populations with, with uh, biomarker evidence of underlying Alzheimer pathology and also clinical diagnosis. And we put all these data uh, together in a, in a model uh, to estimate the prevalence. Um, and found this. Um, this is for larger Europe uh, and an average of larger Europe with uh, uh, about 300 million people aged 50 and above. Uh, and as you can see, the um, uh, prevalence increases with age uh, like this. And there's a difference between men and women also. The increase in, in prevalence is uh, specifically uh, uh, seen in, in AD dementia and prodromal AD. Um, and there are lots of uh, risk factors, including, as we have heard uh, previously, low education, genetic variants, uh, female sex and uh, ethnicity. Um, we also looked into uh, variation across different countries and there we are, uh, the, the data is quite limited, except for general dementia, where there have been large meta-analysis on uh, differences across different, uh, different countries. Um, but in pre-dementia stages uh, of AD, um, those types of analysis are, uh, are uh, lacking. So uh, using these estimates, prevalence estimates, and combining them with the uh, underlying populations in, in Europe, uh, again, large Europe, um, we get to these estimates on the number of uh, persons uh, with um, uh, a biomarker confirmed with amyloid pathology uh, on the Alzheimer spectrum. Uh, so here we have the blue again with AD dementia uh, and the orange with prodromal AD and uh, gray with preclinical AD. And here you can really see the sex difference. Uh, that is both because of uh, a higher risk in women uh, compared to men, uh, but also uh, because women have a higher life expectancy and they're more populous in the older age groups. Uh, so these two combined effects results in this majority of women, especially in the higher ages. Um, but there are also large populations in the younger ages that, uh, despite, uh, that results in, despite uh, the risk of uh, developing, um, uh, is lower in lower ages. Uh, we have quite a lot of, especially um, uh, preclinical AD, persons in, in, uh, that are relatively young. So putting all these uh, numbers together, 
um, we, we conclude that uh, across the Alzheimer's spectrum, um, persons across the Alzheimer's spectrum, they constitute a quarter about of the European population about 50 years of age. Um, and a major majority of these are, are women, and most are in pre-dementia stages of AD, 91%. Uh, so that is the prodromal AD and preclinical uh, AD stages uh, on the Alzheimer's spectrum. Um, and um, the, this is important, as we have heard also before, because these are important targets for preventive measures, because persons in preclinical AD are at risk of progressing uh, to symptomatic disease, and uh, even more so uh, for persons with prodromal AD, where about two in three persons progress to AD dementia within three years. So my conclusions are the majority of persons with AD do not have dementia, uh, but are in early stages of disease where prevention may be possible. And secondly, more than two thirds of all persons on the Alzheimer's spectrum have no measurable symptoms at all and cannot be identified without biomarkers. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in these estimates. It's the first time that we have actually pulled these data together and estimated uh, across the spectrum numbers. Um, so uh, there, there is uh, still need, need for more research on this. Um, and there we like to highlight the need for biomarker confirmed uh, or studies on biomarker confirmed populations. And that is to reduce the uncertainty of prevalence estimates and, and to further the understanding of the impact uh, of AD risk factors on, on prevalence across the Alzheimer's spectrum. Also the variation across different countries um, and also to support the approach uh, of precision medicine uh, in AD. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andres, for your presentation. You said that it would be only numbers, but these were really very, very interesting numbers. So thank you. And it is fantastic for illustration and for our better understanding. So thank you very much.